Today I'm presenting to you my DIY bench power supply. It is based on this 300 volt amp toroidal transformer and it has a linear voltage and current regulator. The output voltage can be set between 0 and around 28 volts and the output current can be limited from around 10 milliamps all the way to about 10 amps. This switch turns the output on and off. The power supply displays output voltage and current, set current limit, output power, as well as temperature of series pass power transistors. Mains comes in through a fuse in this socket. It then goes through this mechanical switch to the primary of this transformer, which has two secondary windings. One 24 volt winding with a center tap and another winding which gives around 8.2 volts. There is an 80 amp relay that switches between 12 volts and 24 volts, which then goes to this full bridge rectifier. I used four MBR 3045PT dual shot key diodes to get a bridge with minimal power losses. I put them on this heatsink and even at 5 amps they barely get warm. Next. This rectified voltage gets smoothed by these capacitors. There are 10 3.3 millifarad capacitors connected in parallel instead of one big capacitor so that the current is shared between all of them, which should increase their lifespan. I used such a huge relay because due to this big capacitance, when this relay switches, there is an enormous amount of current and I wanted to be sure that the relay's contact don't weld together. Finally, this DC voltage feeds the linear regulator. It's a very simple and cheap construction. From this rough DC voltage, there are created three voltages. 15 volts for this op-amp and two 5 volt rails. But one of them is referenced to the output ground, not this circuit ground. This potentiometer is used to regulate the output voltage. It outputs from 0 to 5 volts in reference to the output ground. This voltage then goes through a low-pass filter to the non-inverting input of an op-amp, which compares it with a scaled-down output voltage. Based on the difference between these voltages, the op-amp controls the output voltage with this P-channel MOSFET through this NPN BJT. When the output current transcends around 100 mA, and so the voltage drop on this resistor hits around 680 mV, these power transistors start conducting, which means that at higher currents they dissipate almost all the power. All four of them have a 100 milliohm emitter resistor to share the current equally among them. I used four of these BD249BJTs. They were placed on a separate PCB, which was then mounted on a heatsink from an old graphics card. I also secured an NTC thermistor there beforehand to be able to monitor the temperature. Next, two fans were mounted on the heatsink with a custom PETG 3D printed fixing. This part of the circuit is responsible for turning off the output of the power supply. When this line is low, this transistor turns off and this transistor starts conducting, bringing this voltage to 0 volts resulting in 0 volts on the output. Thanks to this solution, the output current doesn't have to flow through any additional switches. Now, for the current limit function, there is this potentiometer that outputs between 0 and 0.5 volts. Again, this voltage goes through a low-pass filter to the non-inverting input of the op-amp, which compares it with the voltage drop on these current shunt resistors. When the output current is greater than the set current limit, this op-amp sinks current from the base of this transistor, thus reducing the output voltage until the output current is below the set level. At first, as shunts, I used these resistors, but due to their high temperature coefficient, the power supply couldn't measure the current precisely at higher currents. Now I'm using five of these low temperature coefficient of resistance 3 watt resistors, 200 milliohms each, connected in parallel 
It seems to be better, but it's still not perfect. On the front panel, there are previously mentioned potentiometers for regulating voltage and current. They are 10 turns potentiometers, so it's easy to set precise values. On this little board, there are three LEDs for indication that the output is on, power supply works in constant voltage mode or constant current mode. There are these two standard binding posts for the output and directly on them there is another small PCB with output capacitor and wires for measurements directly on the output terminals, thanks to which the output voltage doesn't drop as the output current changes. Last but not least, there is this control board. This Arduino Nano is responsible for controlling fan speed depending on measured temperature. And switching the relay when the output voltage is below 13 volts so that the linear regulator doesn't have to dissipate that much power at lower output voltages. The 16-bit ADC is used to measure output voltage and current, as well as set current limit. Output voltage readings match with my multimeter down to two decimal places. The current readings are reasonably accurate, though it could be improved. For example, by measuring the voltage directly on current shunts instead of the negative output terminal, but that would require one more channel of the ADC. Overall, this construction has some flaws which could be fixed, but it would require more time and most importantly, more money. This is a cheap power supply that can output around 250 watts, which is a lot for a linear power supply. Schematics and code is available in the video's description. I'd be delighted to see your opinion in the comment section. See you in my next video.